today's video we're going to be looking at the King's 160 watt fixed solar panel. Um, so first off the cost is 122 from store, 122 Australian dollars that is. Um, and while that seems cheap for a 12 volt panel, which it is, um, compared to higher grade panels like the Jinko 400 watt, um, it's quite expensive per watt. So we're looking at a cost of about 76 cents per watt with these cheaper made panels when you can buy a 400 watt Jenko panel, which is a high quality rooftop panel, um, for $200. So it works out to be 50 cents a watt for a much higher quality panel. So if you look at it that way, um, even at this price, it is still quite an expensive panel. But anyway, we'll do a uh, review on it, check it out, see how well it is made, see how well it performs. We're going to chuck it on the um, tester. We're almost uh, midday here in Western Australia, and it is the middle of summer. The skies are clear. So come midday, we'll be able to measure the absolute maximum this panel can put out in the hot West Australian sun. Uh, let's have a look at the specs. I'll move you in, zoom you in, hopefully uh, we can see what we got here. Okay, so it's a 160 watt panel. A little closer perhaps, if it stays focused. Uh, plus minus 3%, 19 point five volts is the working voltage um, so of course the best results are going to be had using an MPPT charge controller um, 8.21 amps working current 23.8 volts open voltage 8.4 amps short circuit current um, and you can hook these panels in series apparently up to 1000 volts DC uh, and it says what series fuse rating 20 amps okay so um, the panel's putting out 8.21 amps working maximum current and they wanted to use a 20 amp fuse one would have thought 10 amps would have sufficed but or even 15 but 20 would indicate to me that the panel will probably cack itself before the fuse does should something go wrong okay warranty now the warranty, I'm just going to tip the camera this way a bit, square it up. The first thing I'll read, it's a 12 month warranty. Um, so the warranty is quite low as far as solar panels go. Full 12 month warranty when most of your um, rooftop panels are warrantied for 15, 20 years. But as I say, it's cheap, low quality as far as 12 volt panels go. Well, I shouldn't say the quality is low because so far it looks all right, had a bit of a look over it. But it says here, um, A, uh, what does the warranty cover? Any defect in design or manufacturer which results in the product failing to perform substantially as described in authorised advertising and literature, or literature. So um, the literature says it's a 160 watt panel. Uh, plus minus three percent so if it's under that in the best sunlight we can ever get um, does that mean we get our money back because it's not performing as advertised probably going to be a bit of a fight but we'll see how well it goes uh, before we even worry about that the other thing I noticed here is um, the cables come like this, no MC4 connectors on them, which is odd because um, I have bought other King solar panels which have the MC4 connectors on them, so I'm not sure why these ones are missing. Uh, but looking over the panel, um, all the aluminium has a uh, clear protector on it which you have to peel off 
when you get it, well you don't have to I don't suppose, but um, as this is getting mounted onto a caravan roof, we will be taking this clear protection off the aluminium, um, like so, because it's really only protect the aluminium from scratches and that while uh, it is being transported. So um, yeah, no MC4 connectors, oddly enough, but um, that's not really an issue panels like this because most people buy them go do their own wiring they're not going to have um, the correct equipment to make up uh, cables with MC4 connectors on them anyway so they will just either solder and heat shrink um, or just use some uh, proper silicon cable clamps so as far as the quality goes it is sealed all around the edge with silicon on this side um, we'll flip the panel over, have a look at the panel itself. It did come packaged quite well inside a sturdy cardboard box and had a protective foam layer on it. Okay, so got a bit of um, fluff and that on it, but um, the panel itself as far as visual quality goes is not too bad I can't see any defects in it at all which is a good thing so yeah not too bad of course it's got to be waterproof how waterproof it is I don't know winter's a long way away so we're not going to be able to check that short of throwing it in a swimming pool or something like that but um, the quality looks all right. So what we've got to do next is uh, throw it in the sun and chuck our meter on it. So as you can see at the moment, nice and bright outside and we probably have another half an hour before the midday sun happens for us. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean 12 o'clock. Here in Western Australia, it's more like 12.30 uh, to 12.45 before we get uh, sun. And we'll be using our solar panel power analyzer. That is a MPPT analyzer, so that will show us the maximum power we're gonna get out of this solar panel uh, during the West Australian midday sun uh, for summer. So hottest time of the year, we're averaging around 40 degrees C throughout the weeks. So um, this panel is going to be put in the best possible sunlight and we're going to see its maximum output power. We'll see how close it is to the 160 watts. All right, so I've given the panel a clean with glass cleaner. It takes absolutely spotless. Um, we've hooked up our little meter which is in that box there that you probably can't see but uh, if we zoom you in hopefully you can so what you're looking at there at the moment is the open voltage so it's 23.3 23.4 volts and what we're going to do now is switch on the auto MPPT um, now the panels specifications say plus or minus 3% so we would want to see at least 155 watts to be minus 3% of its 160 watt rating with these cheaper panels you'll never see the plus 3% so um, we'll go ahead and push our little MPPT controller to go and we'll see what happens. Oh, just kick the camera. Okay, so we've got um, 144, 143, and it's just gone through its MPPT process to get the maximum power out of it. 17.7 .7 volts, so we're um, 
close to the maximum working voltage, 18.2. So we've got 143 watts, 7.84 amps at 18.2 volts, 142 watts. Now, I've only just put it out in the sun, so it'll be interesting to see how much further it drops when it gets hot. So at the moment we're only looking about 90%, a little under 90% of its rated power, and that is in the best conditions. Full noon high sunlight in the middle of summer in Western Australia, clear skies, not a cloud in the sky. So we're never going to get any more than that out of this panel. So we have 142 watts. So about 89, 88 to 89 percent of its rated capacity. I'm going to leave it in the sun 15 minutes, come back to see if it dropped any. All right, so it's been sitting in the sun for 15 minutes. That panel is bacon hot. Um, and we've dropped down to 135 watts in output. Uh, so we've lost 10 watts from the heat. And we are at about 84 percent of the manufacturer's specifications um, in working conditions. So, yeah, they are a cheap panel as far as 12 volt panels go. But, um, yeah, we're only gonna get about um, 84 to 85% out of this panel with a MPPT charge controller. That will be even less if you use a PWM charge controller because the panel voltage will be pulled down to the battery voltage. Um, instead of it working at 17.2 volts, it might be working at, say, 12.5 times the current. So um, to get any use out of this panel, um, or the best use you can get out of this panel is to use an MPPT charge controller. Um, and those are the results in midsummer sun. 134 watts from a 160 watt panel, about 84 to 85% of the rated value. Um, and the other thing I did is I went and measured the surface area of the cells themselves um, and came up with 0.8 of a square metre. Um, and the rule of thumb for panels is 1,000 watts um, per square metre times the efficiency of the panel. Um, but if we do it the other way around and use the square metre by the watts we're getting out of it, we can work out how efficient that panel is. This one works out to about 17% efficient. So a little on the low side for today's panels. Um, the good ones are up around 22 to 24% efficient rooftop panels, higher quality 12 volt panels like um, Renergy and uh, they're about the only ones I really use because they are the best performers. Um, I did try one of the uh, Enerdrive panels and found that to perform extremely poorly unfortunately. So the Enerdrive panel was the most expensive panel and didn't perform any better than this King's panel. And we're gonna look at that in another video. But uh, that's gonna wrap it up. There we have it. Uh, we're getting about 84 to 85% of the rated capacity out of this King's panel. That is still very usable. The panel looks like it's pretty good quality for the price. Um, longevity, I don't know. Uh, I have had King's panels I've put on caravans four or five years ago, they are still performing well. So they've outdone their warranty, but the warranty is only one year. Um, so there, that about sums it up. Doesn't deliver within the specifications of the plus or minus 3% of its uh, maximum rate of capacity, but in West Australian midday, midsummer sun operating at maximum temperature we're still getting 85 percent out of it so they're the things you've got to weigh up you know cost to what you get 
Um, I could buy two of these panels for the price of one 170 watt Enerdrive panel. So that's something to think about when you go and do this. And yes, we are going to look at the Enerdrive panels. Um, not so good for the money you pay for them. But anyway, uh, this is our King's panel test. It is what it is. They are real numbers in real Australian sunlight. Um, so 122 bucks, not too bad. We're still getting 135 watts out of it. Thanks for watching guys and uh, we'll see you in the next review.